Okay, so uh, here I am again, and I have made an update to the Descending and Sky Crane program I made a while back. Um, this is an update designed to make it work well with KOS uh, 9.2, or I'm sorry, 0 0.92. And it uh, when I get to the point where you see the code, you might consider it a little bit odd, but that's mostly because it was written over several different versions of KOS, and it's doing a few things manually that you didn't really need to be done manually. But we can get to that later. For now, I'm going to show you the video of how it works now. Here we have an example of another lander by the moon. And uh, right now there's nothing on it. And I'm going to copy the software that actually grabs everything from the archive. <coughs> One of the differences between what used to happen and what happens now with this software is that now I have changed it so that it can handle uh, atmosphere. Now, of course, the first example here is on the moon. There's no atmosphere, but if you look at the stats, there's now a stat for body atmosphere at sea level, uh, the body atmosphere scale, and that has to do with the atmospheric properties of the planet. Okay, so when I run it, I now have a new mode called Sky Crane Slash Lander. And the Sky Crane slash Lander mode is for use with a craft that looks like this one, where you have both a thing to deploy and also a thing that will detach from it that you want to land instead of just having it fly away. So both the two pieces are supposed to land, not just the payload. So here we have like a, a, a lander can for people to live in, as well as a rover for them to drive with. 0.2 is the slope as usual, and then I have two more parameters, that 0 and the empty string. Those have to do with having parachutes, which this doesn't, so we'll just put nothing in there for now. I'll cover what that does in the second half of the video. So as before, I scan forward until I get down below the altitude of the script. There we are, stop the time warp, and aim toward retrograde and start. Now up here you can see there's some new stats that weren't there before. We have the altitude as usual, but now we also have uh, a space to put the periapsis altitude and pressure, which are blank because those don't matter and you don't have an atmosphere. The current thrust is 100%. Are we waiting for aerial braking? No. The neutral thrust is 278. That means at 278% of 100%, it would be able to hover against the gravity. Now that sounds like an awful lot, but that's because it's taking into account the fact that it is not aimed straight vertically, it's aimed at a side like this. And so because of that, it would be pretty much impossible, even at maximum thrust, to prevent itself from falling. And that's why that number is uh, so large. As it turns vertically, that number will, will get more reasonable. The TWR is the thrust-to-weight ratio here, rather than the thrust-to-weight ratio on Kerbin. It's based upon the current gravity based on how far I am from the center of the planet. Now, what I'm showing you here is that I pulled information off the wiki for the highest mountain on the moon, right there. And that information gets used in the script. So I've got that information on most of the bodies in my body database now. Well, I'm sorry, the bodies I've tested with which, with this, which is like five of them. It needs to calculate a guess based upon that, that it might theoretically hit the ground at that height, even though right now it can, it's probably a lot higher than that, it can only see the altitude beneath itself, so it's going to make a guess, there's sort of a heuristic guess in the code, about how relevant that maximum elevation is based upon how horizontal the craft is. The closer it is to horizontal, the more likely it is that it might run into a mountain. So as the steering changes to being more vertical, it cares less and less about the highest potential mountain on the planet and instead just pays attention to the altitude underneath it. Because of that needing to worry about a potential big mountain that might be there, it tends to descend a little bit too slowly. If you look, you can see that the, the speed is already down to about 200, even though it's really too high. It should be getting down to 200 lower than this. 
But again, that's because of the potential for there to be a big mountain in the way that it can't see. So it has to pretend as if there's less altitude to work with than it really has. Now, this part there's not really much to talk about, except just to keep watching it go down. It knows the speed it wants to have based upon the standard equation square root of 2ah, where a is how much you can accelerate and h is the height you have to work with, or in my case, the height that it fakes out and pretends it has to work with based upon the assumption that there might be a mountain in the way. And based on that, it decides what speed it should have at a particular altitude, and then uses a simple PID controller mechanism to try to keep that speed. It's technically not a PID controller because there's no actual integration. It's really more just a PD controller. It's using, it's using just a, a part of what you would need for a full PID controller. Okay, so here we are getting close to the ground. And as we get closer, you'll notice it finally stopping. It came in pretty tight. This ground is flat enough, so it'll go ahead and stop here. And there it descends down very slowly at 3 meters per second to get to the very end. And when it gets there, it will drop the payload. Click lift up the top part for a few seconds, move it sideways for a few seconds, and then switch it to landing mode, and there it goes to land. So both of the pieces have landed, and you can see that it's done and ready. <clears throat> now the next bit is going to show you an example that uses the atmosphere. So here I have Duna. I'm going to be landing at Duna, and you notice it's a particularly large, heavy lander and it has a parachute, a Mark 25 parachute, which is the kind that just drogues a little bit but doesn't really slow you down enough to land with. Now, I have it currently set so that the periapsis is about 20k, which is definitely within the atmosphere but not quite landing yet. And this new ver this version of the script will take into account the fact that there's a parachute and that terminal velocity will help me slow down a little bit. So in this version of it, you'll see me run it with slightly different parameters to what I ran on the moon version. So let's just get to where it gets to that point. Oops. Typo. Try again. There we go. And the reason I don't just run the body data program directly from within the descend program is because I like to have the opportunity to change a setting or two before I do it. In this case, for example, I've decided I'd like to land a little bit faster than normal. And I've decided I'd like to have it stop its descent profile quite a bit higher up than the default for Duna. And I'm, I'm doing it at 250 instead of 100. The reason for that is that this is a very tall craft, and I cannot query the height of the craft where its center of mass is relative to its bottom. So because of that, I tend to crash into the ground because it's a lot taller than it realizes it is. Okay, so now I'm landing as just a lander for a slope of 1, and I'm telling it that I have one parachute of type Mark 25 parachute, which is, as you see when you right-click on the part, its exact name. You have to spell it precisely correctly, including the spaces and the capitalization. And it can only handle having a number of uniform parachutes. You couldn't have like a Mark 25 and a Mark 16 in the same craft. It wouldn't understand how to deal with that because it can't do varying parameters. So if you assume it's all the same type, and there could be more than one of them, but they all have to be the same, it will calculate drag based on that. Now you will see that it thrusted for a little bit, but not very long. And now the periapsis is at about 10k. The reason is because it decided that the Periat that the terminal velocity at 10k on Duna is slow enough that at this point it's okay to go ahead and wait for aerial braking. It doesn't need to thrust, it'll just wait until, the alti until it hits that lower altitude and it's predicting what the terminal velocity will be with the parachute deployed. Which is why you had to tell it ahead of time what your chutes were. Now, we don't have the capacity in KOS script yet to query all the parts on the ship. If we did, you wouldn't have to tell it 
how many parachutes of what type, it would query the ship and find out. But since we can't do that yet, that's why that parameter was there. Okay, so coming on down in, uh, I've got it zoomed out to see a little bit better. I'm going to physics warp here. It has to be physics warp because it's in the atmosphere. Now, you'll notice the video skip a bit here. That's because my video recording software really doesn't like having the CPU heavily utilized, which is what it, it happens when you put it under physics warp. So a, a little bit of the, 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 the skippiness you see here is actually an artifact of the video capture rather than the actual experience you get in the game. But as it comes down, it recognizes the fact that there's no need to thrust, and because its terminal velocity is good enough. Also, you'll notice the terminal velocity, or the periapsis prediction, says that my periapsis is 8,264 meters. And it's really not. It's actually below the ground. But what it's doing is using the height of the highest mountain on Duna as the potential worst-case scenario for how the how thin the air could potentially be at the ground. The thinnest it possibly could be is the highest mountain. So, based upon the presumption that that is the worst-case scenario in terms of the least aerial braking I might be able to have, and on Duna that matters because just a, f a few kilometers makes a huge difference on how much density of atmosphere you have. So, also, again, that was derived from me going into the wiki and typing a lot of data in. Unfortunately, it's not all organized in the same place. Here it's in the body of the text of the page, rather than on the sidebar, so... That's a little annoying, but anyway. Um, so you go down in, and the terminal velocity it's predicting there is 154, potentially. Um, it's probably actually a little bit slower than that, because it won't be landing on top of the highest mountain. But it's going to base its calculations on that worst-case scenario. It still doesn't think it needs to thrust anything. What this will actually do is use the fairly poor parachute in combination with the fairly thin atmosphere of Duna to slow it down a bit, but it won't slow down all the way to landing speed. So you'll see it kick in the thrusters only at the very end. It'll, it'll use the chutes as long as it can. Once its speed slows down beneath terminal velocity, then at that point it will start to behave as if the atmosphere isn't even present. It'll just fly as the same way it would fly without atmosphere, because once you go slow enough, the atmospheric drag becomes negligible. So the, the real simple solution I did in my script is when my speed gets below the terminal velocity, then just stop taking into account the atmosphere and fly as if you were in a vacuum which you can see the engine kicking in, is what it started to do here. And you'll notice the periapsis altitude and terminal velocity stopped being calculated at that point. So it's coming in pretty fast. You can see the ground coming up and you can see the shadow there. But it did calculate just enough room for it to land with its thrust. Now it's going to hover a little bit high here because I told it 250 meters. The other reason I set it kind of high is that this ship is very heavy and has, doesn't quite have enough torque to really turn quickly. So trying to do the hover maneuvering, you can see it's chasing the retrograde vector back and forth because it's a little bit delayed on its reaction speed and the rotation of this thing is too slow. So it, it needs a little bit of time here to get itself to stop oscillating. That's the other reason I set, set it a little higher than normal. I made this craft deliberately super heavy for the amount of thrust available, just to really give the script a bit more to play with and test. But it finally oscillates back down to, to sanity and descends down at that 4 meters per second until it gets to the ground. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, the other thing is, if you notice the bottom of the stats list says duration of prev iteration, that's telling you how long it takes to run each iteration because it deliberately sleeps a little bit if it's high up and not thrusting something I forgot to mention earlier. There it is on the ground, landing on the teeny tiny lander legs with its big heavy payload. And that's it. So there's an example of using a bit of atmosphere to help. And I am done with that explanation. Now you should be able to see um, in the video description some links to that code and I was going to be recording a thing that walked through the code line by line but that really turned out to be kind of long and boring so I'm not going to post that I'll just post the code and you can read it yourself thank you and